Plastic is everywhere. From water bottles to food containers, from packaging to electronics, plastic has become an integral part of modern life. But with convenience comes a cost. Every year, millions of tons of plastic waste end up in landfills, oceans, and ecosystems, causing serious environmental damage. The good news? Plastic recycling exists as one way to combat this crisis. But how exactly is plastic recycled? What happens after we toss that bottle into the blue bin? In this video, we're diving deep into the recycling process, from collection to transformation, and revealing what really happens to plastic once it leaves our hands. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. It all starts with collection. Depending on where you live, this could mean curbside recycling bins, drop-off centers, or specialized collection programs. These systems are designed to gather used plastic products and bring them to a central location, the Materials Recovery Facility, or MRF for short. At the MRF, plastics are separated from other recyclables like paper, cardboard, and metals. Although some of the sorting is done manually, much of it is now automated using advanced technology. Conveyor belts move materials under infrared sensors, which detect and separate plastics by type. Air jets then blast the different plastics into designated bins. It's an impressive feat of engineering, but this stage is critical. Mixing different types of plastic can ruin a batch, making it unsuitable for recycling. That's why sorting is not just about separating plastic from other materials, but also distinguishing between the many different types of plastics themselves. You might have noticed the little numbers inside triangles on plastic items. Those are resin identification codes. These numbers range from one to seven, and indicate the type of plastic used. For example, PET, or PET, which is number one, is commonly found in water and soda bottles. HDPE, or number two, is used for milk jugs and detergent containers. These two types are the most widely accepted by recycling programs. Other types, like PVC, number three, LDPE, number four, and polystyrene, number six, are more challenging to recycle due to contamination, mixed materials, or lack of demand. And then there's number seven, the other category, which includes everything from polycarbonate to bioplastics, many of which are not recyclable through conventional systems. Once plastics are sorted by type and color, they're sent to be cleaned. Cleaning is more than just rinsing. Recyclers need to remove labels, adhesives, food residue, oils, and any other contaminants that could compromise the recycled product. This is done through a combination of washing machines, flotation tanks, and drying systems. For instance, PET flakes are often washed in hot soapy water and run through high-speed friction washers. After cleaning, the plastics are shredded into small pieces or flakes. Shredding not only makes the material easier to process, but also helps detect remaining impurities. At this stage, some facilities use additional sorting techniques, like density separation in water, where materials with different weights either sink or float. The goal is to create a clean, uniform input that's ready for the next stage, melting and remolding. Now comes the transformation. The clean plastic flakes or pellets are melted down to form raw materials that can be molded into new products. This step varies depending on the type of plastic. For instance, PET is often extruded into long strands, which are then chopped into small uniform pellets. These pellets are used as the base material to manufacture new containers, textiles, or packaging. HDPE may be melted and directly molded into new detergent bottles or piping. But not all plastics are created equal. 
Some degrade after being melted, making them less suitable for high-quality products. This is especially true for plastics that have been recycled multiple times. That's why many recycled plastics are downcycled, meaning they're turned into products of lower quality or functionality, such as park benches, carpet fibers, or insulation materials. Though still useful, this downcycling highlights the limitations of plastic recycling and the need for more sustainable solutions. Beyond traditional or mechanical recycling, there's a newer method called chemical recycling. Instead of shredding and melting, chemical recycling breaks plastic down into its basic molecular components using heat, solvents, or catalysts. This process can, in theory, return plastic to its original virgin quality, allowing for infinite recycling loops without degradation. Technologies like pyrolysis, depolymerization, and gasification are being explored for this purpose. While promising, chemical recycling is still in its early stages. It's expensive, energy-intensive, and not yet widely available. However, many experts believe it could play a major role in future recycling infrastructure, especially for hard-to-recycle plastics. Despite its potential, plastic recycling faces serious challenges. First, global recycling rates are still low. Less than 10% of all plastic ever produced has been recycled. Much of this is due to poor infrastructure, contamination, and economic factors. It's often cheaper to make new plastic from fossil fuels than to recycle old plastic, especially when oil prices are low. Second, the complexity of plastic products like multi-layer packaging or plastic blended with other materials makes them difficult to recycle. And third, consumer confusion about what is and isn't recyclable leads to contamination in the recycling stream, which can ruin entire batches. Even with the best systems in place, plastic recycling alone cannot solve the plastic pollution problem. So what's the way forward? Improving recycling is one part of the solution, but it needs to be paired with smarter design, reduced plastic use, and better public education. Companies can design products with recyclability in mind, using single material packaging, eliminating unnecessary plastic, or switching to biodegradable alternatives. Governments can invest in better recycling infrastructure, enforce regulations on plastic production, and support innovation. And consumers, people like you and me, can make a difference by reducing our plastic use, recycling properly, and advocating for change. Ultimately, recycling is not a silver bullet, but a tool. And when combined with systemic efforts, it can help us transition toward a more sustainable, circular economy. So the next time you toss a plastic bottle into the recycling bin, remember the long journey it might take from sorting and shredding to melting and remanufacturing. Recycling is a complex but fascinating process. And while it's not perfect, it's still an important step toward reducing our environmental footprint. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.